week in the conversation. Like I, I said the other day, it's been a good year for uh, State Farm reps. Obviously, the new Jake from State Farm getting a lot of pub with his uh, big muscles and tiny shirts. And, uh, you know, Pat, such a phenomenal player. Um, he's had a, had a great year as well. Be, it'd be, uh, you know, something that's usually on the, on the preseason goal list, and it's nice to be in the conversation. All right. Well, Shannon, do you like how open he was talking about the MVP? I do not because contrary to what people think, people say it goes at the beginning of the season, be it Super Bowls, MVPs, all pro teams, uh, Pro Bowl skip. Guys set that on the list. They want that. Now, very few guys are willing to openly talk about it like. Aaron just sat there and had a casual conversation, and he was very relaxed. If you looked at him, Skip, if you didn't know better, if I didn't see that Green Bay stuff behind him, I thought he was at home having a conversation with some of his boys or talking to someone from him, doing an article about him, an interview with him. It felt like it was the offseason. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was very casual, very matter-of-fact about, yeah, it would mean a lot to me. And it would because, Skip, he's six touchdowns away from his career high. And we don't normally see guys set career highs this late in their career. Now, we see guy, guys might have a career game. Yep. And, yeah, you could have a game here or there. But he threw one year, he threw, I think, 45 touchdowns and had four picks, five picks. And so he's on that pace again with two, three games left. All he needs is six touchdowns to tie his career highs, uh, seven to break it. So for me, Skip, he is. He's in that discussion. He was always going to be in that discussion, and that is expected of him, and he rich, he mentioned it. There are not very many guys that have won three, Skip. You got Peyton at five, and then Brady, Favre, United, and Jim Brown with three. So to add Rogers, say to add my name to that list, yes. And he also said that he thinks he should live, uh, uh, live up to what this stands for as an acronym. You know, a person who is valuable to their team, and I feel like that's why I'm in that conversation every single year, basically. So for me, Skip, I believe it's a two-man race. Aaron Rodgers has been spectacular. Um, and he talked about some of the reasons why he believed it is. Second year in the system, because Skip Bayless tell me, so I don't want any excuse for why Tom Brady is not playing up to his standard. Mm. Because Aaron Rodgers had one year in the system, and you didn't give him any concessions. You mm. didn't give him any breaks. Mm. So I don't want to hear anybody that's thinking about getting a break in the first year of a new system mm. when they've been in another system for their entire career. Mm. So with that being said, it's coming down to him and Mahomes. These last three games is going to be of utmost importance because both teams are the number one seed. Mahomes is 12-1, 23. So things are close with the exception of touchdown. Rodgers is six clear, interceptions uh, one apart. Mahomes is 500 yards ahead. Mm. But Aaron Rodgers is very comfortable. He feeling real good. Skip, you about to have two fingers of the old Scotch before he got no tequila. Mm -hmm. You about to have some tequila. of that? Yeah, you about to have two fingers of tequila. They relaxed him. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he's playing well. He's mm. playing very well. So, I heard my man across the table take a half step down the right road on this topic. But then you step back and you continue to defend your man, Aaron Rodgers. What's going to defend? Ain't nothing to defend, Skip. This was the classic example of why Aaron Rodgers is not Tom Brady. Tom Brady, no matter what year, this year, 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, never in his career would he have taken that bait from the media with three games remaining with home field still hanging in the balance with only one buy per conference this yeah. year. Not only did Aaron Rodgers talk about MVP, he embraced it and began to campaign for it, how much it meant, how, how he got robbed in these other years. I don't know if he necessarily got robbed because I thought Peyton had a better year in 2012. That's the, you believe Peyton should have won his first year in Denver I, with AP won. Okay, but he's chalking that one up to AP running wild on them in the final game and leaving that last impression in the voters' minds. AP ran wild on everybody. Okay. Hey. <laughs> and just for the record, in 2016, Aaron did lead the league in touchdown passes. But Matt Ryan led the league in QBR, right. and you correctly predicted because you had inside information <laughs> on the show. You predicted he would win the MVP, and he did. And by the way, Pro Football Focus in 2016 ranked this guy named Brady, who was then up in New England, as having the best grade in pro football. Number one quarterback in performance that year, according to Pro Football Focus, was Tom Brady. So I don't think Aaron ha has much of an argument about 2016, but he said... 
I didn't even get a sniff. Didn't even, sniff. Zip of didn't it. even get a sniff of it. Okay. So to me, it is so Aaron, who is the LeBron James of the National Football League, it is so Aaron to kick back and relax and all but campaign for MVP. Man, they can't with, pay with three games remaining. They got Carolina this Saturday at home. Should be able to win that four one. Down against them. Then they got Tennessee. Gets a little tougher and then they finish at their arch rival at Chicago and you know and I know that the Bears will just they're going to come to play that day yeah they will so you have potential to lose a couple of these games and right now you're 10 and 3 as is New Orleans New Orleans has a very tough game obviously against Kansas City on Sunday they are home underdogs on Sunday and by the way they they play the 15th toughest or easiest schedule remaining so it's it's pretty tough for them I'm, I'm sorry, they're, they're the 24th toughest. I, I got the wrong one. I got them. Um, so, so New Orleans is up against it. So, yeah. so Green Bay's in the driver's they're seat. The so they, they should be. The Rams are 9-4. and four. Seattle's 9-4. and four. But, but if Seattle and the Rams play each other again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but you cannot slip up here. No. You, you cannot take your eyes off the prize and start talking about an individual award. And you started to say that you, your first line out of your mouth was you did not like it, that he talked so openly about MVP. Am I right? Skip, I, if he I, was your quarterback, if it were John Elway and you were a Bronco, <laughs> you, you wouldn't love it. You'd, you'd honor it because I, it's John Elway. I don't know if we've ever had a, comp, a quarterback that exuded the amount of confidence that he does and his mannerism. And Skip, he had a discount double check. He did that. Quarterbacks don't really have celebrations, especially the old school. I don't, John ain't have no celebration. Marino and Aikman and Bradshaw, those guys ain't have no celebration. They threw a touchdown, pump the fence, and go to the sideline. Far was more emotional yeah, yeah. word on a sleeve. Right. But oh, he they didn't might have a celebration. They might headbutt the guy or something mm -hmm. like that. But now since they got the camera skip in the end zone, Aaron Rodgers actually go pose for the camera. Remember he did the McCrinkleberry in Tampa? He did. And he posed and he he is in there with him. And then what happened? Skip, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying. Mm. So he's one of the few quarterbacks that has the confidence of a wide receiver or a, or a, a cornerback or a secondary guy, Skip, that will show you mm -hmm. the yeah, I'm that I'm that guy. I just want you to know I'm that guy. I'm still mm. that guy. Yep. And so for me, Skip, look, these guys are different now in the way they do things. And I think we're going to have to be more accepting mm -hmm. of, of the openness and the willingness to talk about things that they want to achieve. Mm. So now you're suddenly reversing field and you're okay with him talking about this? Skip, that's Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they, look, the thing is, is that you get an opportunity. I mean, you said they got the Titans, they got Carolina, and they got the Bears. Y'all can derail this MVP campaign. Mm. Y'all can derail it. Now, I just saw uh, uh, Drew Locke go 21-27 against Carolina mm -hmm. for four touchdowns. I saw Baker Mayfield throw four touchdowns on 20-25 against the Titans mm -hmm. in the first half. Mm -hmm. Good luck derailing his campaign. Mm. There's a good chance, Skip, at the end of the year, if he lasts three games, he might be 50-4. and four. Mm. The guy goes 50-4, and four, I don't know how you give the MVP to anybody else other than him. Mm. Even if Mahomes goes 5,040, mm. I don't believe that is enough to overtake 50 touchdowns, four interceptions. And a number one seed. Mm. And I believe that's what they're going to have. I don't see a scenario skip. Now, Tennessee is going to be daunting. Mm. But you better, hey, you better buckle up your chin straps. Because that big kid, uh, uh, big King Henry, mm -hmm. he coming. And it was cold. It doesn't matter. The cold it is, that means the less likely you are wanting to tackle him. Hey, skip, I'm not trying to jump in front of a bus. Remember, it's very possible he would go Adrian Peterson yes. on you. Yes. Right? And you remember what Adrian Peterson did. And the Packers are not that good at stopping the run, mm. Skip. Mm. So they got their work cut out for him. But Aaron is having a phenomenal season. And like you said, State Farm is looking real good right mm. now. They are. He said it's been a good year for the State Farm <laughs> reps and for the new Jake from State Farm. Yeah. He does. He, he's pretty ripped in a yeah. tight T-shirt. Right. In, the, in those two, those, yeah. especially the one where Aaron's throwing it to the dog, the right. little dog. Right. Okay. So I've told you this before, but I, I compare Aaron to LeBron James because – there's been a lot of conjecture even the last couple of days about why Kyrie left LeBron. And what I was told from a source very close to Kyrie is he just got tired of LeBron's focus on individual achievement versus team. They did come back from 3-1, obviously, to win it. Kyrie had a big shot. I'll give you that he had a chase down block. LeBron did. But the point was 
that Kyrie felt it was all about LeBron instead of all about the team. Well, you can argue Kyrie is right out of the same mold. Thank but, you. But okay, so it's you know pot calling kettle, right? Yes. Okay, so the point is that if I were a teammate of Aaron Rodgers right now, I might think in the back of my mind, as much as I love him, as I'm glad he's my quarterback, man, his focus is all on his individual achievement when, when we have a goal out there that's attainable. Skip, I think the thing is he realized that he played unbelievable last year. And the reason why, and even though they were the number one seed, no one really thought of me the fourth time. It was Russ. And then once, my, once uh, Lamar Jackson took over about week eight, I don't really, week eight, week nine, Skip, nobody else was in the discussion mm. because he was having such a transcendent year. Mm. We don't normally see a quarterback, well, a lot of people said he was a running back or a wide mm -hmm. receiver, lead the league in passing touchdowns and okay. break the quarterback rush record with over 1,200 yards. Mm. Lead the league in rushing by a large margin. So unless somebody had a, a 5,045 yard touchdown season, Lamar Jackson was going to be the MVP. But as he said, as LeBron is in the MVP conversation basically every single year mm. because Aaron Rodgers is so talented.